So in this video, we're going to talk about some other types of inheritance besides complete dominance. So in this first example, we're going to talk about incomplete dominance, which you can think of as an in-between phenotype. So I have here a pink snapdragon flower that's the in-between phenotype from a cross between a white flowered parent and a red flowered parent. And so um, it, rather than red being dominant over white, in this case we get an in-between phenotype. And so we can still predict um, the outcome of particular crosses if we know that they have incomplete dominance. So for example, let's say that we're going to represent okay, the oops, genetics. So CWCW, CW, let's say this is going to be a white flowering plant. Okay. CRCR is going to be a red flowering plant. Therefore, when you have one of each, CRCW or CWCR, right, that's going to give us a phenotypically pink flower. So let's say that we want to cross a pink flowering plant with a white flowering plant. W there, okay. Let's see what we would get. Well, we first need to know the genotype of the pink flowering plant, which would be one of the red alleles and one of the white alleles, and we're going to cross that with a white flowering plant, so two of the white alleles. Let's give ourselves a little room here to, to do a Punnett square. Okay, so let's put this parent across the top. One gamete can have the red flowering allele, while the other gamete can have the white flowering allele. This parent will put down the side. Okay, in this case, the only gametes that can be produced from this particular parent are, are, are the white flowering alleles. So now we just need to fill in the Punnett square. Okay, so if we look at the genotypic ratio, okay, we have two to two, that's an R, or 50%, right? If we look at the phenotype, phenotypic ratio, we have two pink to two white or 50% each. So that is how you can, you, the Punnett square works the same way. You just have to remember that in this case, we don't have one trait that's completely dominant over another trait. Now let's move to our next topic, which is called codominance. And you'll notice just the difference in the flower. We don't have a pink flower. We actually have a flower with red parts and white parts. So with codominance, we get both phenotypes expressed. So in this case, it's both the red and the white. So if we did a Punnett square, it would be the same type of situation, right? You would you would know that if you had, for example, one allele of the red flowered plant, one allele from the white flower, instead of getting a pink flower, in this case you're getting a flower that has both red and white portions on it. Now there's some other examples besides just flowers, and that is in horses, okay, horses have what's called a roan, R-O-A-N, coloring, which is when you have, for example, red hair, and white hair expressed at the same time. And so the result is a phenotype that actually has both hairs, and it's called a roan coat coloring. Okay, another example of codominance, which is a little more complicated than just codominance, is blood typing. Okay, so this is, we all know something about 
type A, type B, type AB, type O blood. So let's spend a couple minutes just talking about what do we mean, what does that mean in blood typing. Well, we're referring to some special markers or tags that are on the outside of our red blood cells. So on these red blood cells, uh, type A blood means you have a particular marker that's called the A antigen on the outside of your red blood cells. Type B has a different antigen, which is the B antigen. And then those who have type AB blood actually express both the A antigen and the B antigen on the outside of their red blood cells. Now those that are type O blood, that means type O is the absence of either of those antigens. So for type O, we don't have A antigen or B antigen presence. It's the absence of. Now with blood typing, it turns out that the A, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to represent the A antigen allele with a capital I and an A superscript. Okay. A antigen allele. I'm going to use the B antigen allele with a, a capital I with a B with a superscript. Okay, then we have a lowercase i I'm going to use for the third allele. So we have more than two possible alleles for this particular gene. And this is essentially the absence of the A or B antigen. Now the reason that I've used capital I here and capital I here is because these two are codominant. So the A antigen allele and the B antigen allele are codominant. They can be equally expressed, but they are both dominant to the recessive or the lowercase i. That's why I've written it in lowercase to show that it is recessive to either the IA or the IB antigen. So if we talk a little more about blood typing, to be type A, there's, there's two different genotypes. A person can have both alleles for the A antigen, or a person can have one of the A antigen alleles and one of the recessive alleles. Remember, the A, A antigen allele will mask, will be dominant over the lowercase, so both of these will give a type A blood. Okay. Similarly, to be type B, you can have both of the B antigen alleles, or you can have one and the lowercase i, or the absence of allele for one allele. Okay, let's keep going. There's only one way to be AB, and that is to have one of each, to be to have an I A, oops, and an IB antigen allele. Okay, let me fix this. And there's only one way to be type O, and that is to have both recessive alleles or the absence of either of those A or B antigen alleles. Now the rest of this table shows you that in the plasma of the blood, which is the liquid part of the blood, it shows you what antibodies are present in the plasma. So for someone who has a, the type A antigen, they will have antibodies to the B antigen. So whatever antigens they don't have on their red blood cells, they have antibodies to those in their plasma. So those who are type B have anti-A antibodies. Those who are AB don't have any antibodies because they have both antigens present. Those who are type O have both the A and the B antibodies. So when we talk about blood, doni blood, blood donation, right, who can donate to whom and who can receive from whom, it has to do with the antibodies that are present in the serum. You don't want those reacting with the red blood cell tags because it causes them to clump together. It's called agglutination, and it can be very harmful and can lead to death. Now let's work a few blood typing problems, okay, to make sure that we understand what's going on with blood typing. So let's say that we have a man and a woman have a child. So woman, uh, whoops. Okay, so let's say the female, the woman's blood type is type A. And the man's blood type is 
type O. And we want to know what are all the possible blood types that their children can have. Well, the man's genotype is easy to figure out. There's only one way to be type O. But the woman's genotype is harder. She could either be IAIA or IAI. So we'll have to do two different Punnett squares so that we can determine all the possibilities for their children. So let's set up our first Punnett square and we'll use this genotype for her. Okay, so remember the, the gametes up here can only get half, right? In this case, she only has one allele type to, to contribute and the man only has one allele type. So we can see that if this were her genotype, 100% right, of their children will be IAI. That would be their genotype. Therefore, their phenotype would be type A blood. Now, for the second Punnett square, we want to use the other genotype for her, okay? because we're not sure. So if this, in fact, is her genotype, then they have a 50-50% chance, right? 50% of their children would likely be type A, and 50% would be type O. 